Today, I want to talk about the next step in Apple's ecosystem, AR and VR. This is something that you've no doubt heard about for probably years at this point, but we are now finally at the point where these hopes and dreams could start to come true. And I think it's worth breaking down the rumors, what we know, and what this actually means for the Apple ecosystem and the world of technology to come. So today, that's what we're gonna talk about. Make sure to leave a like down below, real or holographic, and let's get into it. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace, the number one tool for creating your beautiful online presence. Okay, so to start this video out, I do wanna address some confusion because there has been a ton of news for probably three years at this point about Apple's AR headset, about Apple's VR headset, Apple Glass, and this whole swirling concoction of rumors. And if you're like me and you haven't followed it super closely until recently, that might confuse you. You're like, wait a minute, is this like some glasses that you put on or is this a VR headset? Well, the correct answer, it seems, is both. Basically, what we are looking at here with all of these disjointed rumors is a puzzle that shows a spectrum of devices over the next three to 10 years. So for example, when you hear rumors like the ones that have been coming out recently about mass production of Apple's mixed reality headsets starting early next year, and specifically when you see this design or this render made by friend of the channel, Ian Zelbo, that has been circling like crazy. And that is Apple's first step into VR, AR, mixed reality. Now, the reason I think it's important to make that distinction is I've seen some people mistake this for Apple Glass and say, oh, that's not AR, that's VR. The reason is these are separate products. Apple's AR, like glasses that you put on, that's an end goal. We're still probably three, four, five years away from that actually happening. This is their first step. And I think it's important to break down the rumors and categorize which ones fall into which category. For example, one of the earlier rumors is this from 2020. This is one of Ross Young's earlier display leaks, which discusses a 0.5 inch Sony micro OLED display with a resolution of 1280 by 960 and 100,000 to one contrast ratio. The way that this rumor was discussed was in context of Apple Glass. But if you look at the image here, you can see that these are very clearly not transparent. So this is where some of the confusion starts to arise. Everyone knows that the end goal is glasses that you put on your face with translucent lenses that display information. That is where Apple wants to go. This is not that. Could you imagine putting that on your face? That would look ridiculous. This is mixed reality. And all of the things that we have seen about imminent display technologies, that is going to be for the headset. Now, if we fast forward to a more recent analysis from Ross Young, remember that is over two years ago. Well, now things have been upgraded quite a bit. Ross Young is now saying that there will be three OLED displays inside this AR VR headset. So this is using two of those aforementioned micro OLED panels for the primary displays that each of your eyes will look into and an additional AMO LED panel, which we honestly don't know what that would be for. Now my guess as to what that third display would be is probably something on the exterior of the headset. Maybe it would function like a touch bar and give you some controls on the physical surface that could then turn off and blend and make it all nice and seamless in a nice app way. You know what else would be nice and seamless? This transition to today's video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is simply the best tool for creating a beautiful website, such as mine advocating for the creation of a 15-inch MacBook. I can create a storefront with products that advocate my cause, and I can even use Squarespace's member areas to create paid courses or unique content for the most avid 15-inch MacBook fans. And who wouldn't be one? We're talking about the power and efficiency of Apple Silicon in a thin, light, fanless enclosure with a 15-inch display. Who wouldn't want that? And who wouldn't want easy-to-use and customizable website templates? 
Check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to publish your website, go to squarespace.com slash Lukmiani to take... And when you're ready to publish your website, go to squarespace.com slash Lukmiani to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And now let's get back to the video. OLED isn't typically used in VR headsets because it doesn't have the highest pixel density. So this micro OLED would be a new technology that allows you to get very high contrast ratios and deep blacks while also having several thousand PPI. Those are really important ingredients. And I know that we can discuss back and forth about whether VR or AR is the future, if either of them in fact are, but one thing that I will say as a somewhat hesitant VR person myself, those are the two biggest obstacles. Well, actually the second two biggest obstacles, the first one being weight. And that's something that honestly gives me some pause about this mixed reality headset, because if you look at the renders by Ian, then, well, that's a big guy. It kind of looks like it's taking design cues from AirPods Max, which are not known for being lightweight. So if Apple does go with that rigid aluminum construction for a headset, I, I would have concerns about longevity of use. One of the big concerns that a lot of us have about headsets, even cutting edge ones like the new MetaQuest Pro is, well, it's a big old thing on your head and you're gonna get tired. It sits on your nose, it sits on your cheekbones, it weighs on your neck, it pushes down on your head. It's not comfortable for long periods of time. And if Apple takes, but aside from the weight concern, the display technology that Apple appears ready to use is significant because I personally get a lot of eye strain in VR when you can see pixels that close to your eye with those blue lights and not great black levels blasting into your skull. Ugh, I'm not a fan of that. I personally keep my displays on low brightness. I turn on true tone. I turn on night shift. I like them to be high resolution, high contrast, dim, and vibrant. But that brings us on to price, because there's a reason that no other VR headset has 4,000 PPI micro OLED displays. And that's because it's insanely expensive and brand new technology. So if you think this is gonna be like a $1,499 product, no. I think we're gonna be talking like $5,000. I honestly think that Apple is gonna lose money when they are starting to sell this headset. I mean, those displays have to be insanely expensive, not just to produce, but to R&D. The, the cost of developing a display like that, even with Sony, is immense. So yeah, these things are gonna be outrageously expensive and you're gonna be beta testing this technology. So I wouldn't exactly get your hopes up that Apple's gonna go change the world in one fell swoop, although that is definitely their goal, and this is the first step in getting there. All the Apple higher-ups at this point for the better part of two years have been repeatedly hinting and saying that AR is the future. Mixed reality isn't quite a full AR experience. I don't think you're gonna see people walking around with these in public for some time, but this is how Apple develops these things. Why do you think your iPhone has a LiDAR sensor? Sure, it helps the camera focus and allows you to use 3D scanning apps to build models of your rooms and other more niche or accessibility focused implementations. But the real reason that your iPad Pro and your iPhone have a LiDAR sensor is data. Augmented reality is 100% dependent on having extremely accurate depth and 3D mapping technology. And you're not gonna get that just testing with a couple thousand Apple engineers at Cupertino. You're gonna need real world data. Now, I don't think that they're uploading scans of your room to the cloud or anything crazy like that, but they're definitely getting real world applications from hundreds of millions of devices that have this capability. And these are all steps along the path to Apple glasses. That's the end goal. This mixed reality headset, while very cool, I'm sure, 
is not what Apple eventually wants. A fully normal looking wearable set of glasses that have screens that are translucent, that project on your surroundings and literally immerse you in the Apple ecosystem. Now, there's a lot of bugs and your ease of use things to figure out. Like, are we gonna use gestures? Is everyone gonna walk around like this in the next 10 years? Is this gonna be limited? Is it just gonna be doing essentially Apple Watch functionality for the foreseeable future? These are the questions that Apple's going to need to answer. So buckle up, because the next few years are going to be wild. But you know what wouldn't be wild? If you leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel, because I gotta figure out how to make videos about VR. Ooh gosh. While I figure out that, get subscribed and I'll see you guys in the next video.